Happy New Year, everyone. We have just finished 2022, and we are now in 2023, a new year where you can either find a new job in your life or a new girlfriend in your life and find something fresh that you want to do or just see what people are complaining about on the internet. I can't wait. But for this video, I'm only going to be focusing on the movies that are coming out in 2023. I'm not going to focus on any of the political stuff or like some of the movie news people would talk about or get upset about on the internet, like a certain casting choice that they don't like for a certain character that they loved for years. And I'm going to focus on the movies that I'm either excited for, ones I am skeptical about, and ones that I'm not excited for at all, but it's possible it could be good because you never know if a movie that you're dreading to see could be either good or not. And I'm only going to be focusing on the movies each month that I am excited for or skeptical about, except for January, because for the most part, with some exceptions, January is the limbo month for movies that come out that end up being complete crap. Although, Megan, that robot little girl movie that just came out recently, has a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Might have to check that out, but I'm not gonna count it here because it just came out already. And it's possible that some of the movies I'm gonna mention could either be pushed back to 2024 or just cancelled and not get released at all if you've been reading some movie news for the past few weeks. So we're gonna be starting on February with... I feel like if I mention this, it's going to be controversial because this movie is made by a certain director that's known for making some movies that are really, really bad. But he's also made some films that are actually really, really good. And some of his earlier films are known for very famous twist endings. So here we go. Not at the Cabin, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Unsubscribing right now. Unsubscribe. This guy's dead to me now because he likes M. Night Shyamalan films. Unsubscribe. <laughs> I'm just messing around. But I really am looking forward to watching this film because I enjoy half of Shyamalan's work. Mostly his earlier films like The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable Signs, and I actually enjoy The Village, and I liked The Visit as well, and I love Split, and Glass, uh, it had its moments. But I am hoping that this one's good because from watching the trailers, most of this film looks like it's going to take place in a cabin in the woods, which could make it a very claustrophobic thriller. Dave Batista and Rupert Grind of Harry Potter fame are in this film, so hopefully this one does become one of Shyamalan's better films. Next up is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Now, the Ant-Man films haven't been some of my favorite films in the MCU. Like, I do think the first Ant-Man film is fun. The second one, not so much. I mean, I, I don't hate them. They can be entertaining. They have some good humor and some good characters, but... Those films never really stood out to me as much as like the Winter Soldier or the first Avengers film. But it could be elevated a little bit now they have Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror, the main villain of the film, because the trailer made it look like he was going to be a big threat, so hopefully he does become one of the better parts of the film. And I am looking forward to seeing Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly back as Ant-Man and the Wasp, but adding Kang the Conqueror just gets me even more interested in this film. Now for March, starting with Creed 3, I do enjoy a few of the Rocky films, like I do love the first film, and I am also a fan of the two Creed films. I love the first film, and I do really like the second one, and I'm looking forward to this one because it has both Michael B. Jordan back and Jonathan Majors as the main villain who is once again appearing on this list. But part of me is a little concerned because even though I'm a fan of Michael B. Jordan as an actor, he hasn't really directed anything else besides this film, so he doesn't have a whole experience with directing anything yet, so I am hoping this is still a great Creed film, and I'm hoping that Michael B. Jordan proves me wrong, and maybe it kind of opens the door for Michael B. Jordan to direct more films in the future. 
John Wick Chapter 4. Yes, there's going to be four of these films now, and I am along for the ride because I love the first John Wick. Two and three are fun and intense, but I still think the first John Wick is the best one. They have really well-filmed action sequences, great stun work, and Keanu Reeves giving it his all in the films, and I'm hoping that they continue all of that with this film, because if they do, then great. Let's hope this movie's awesome. Inside, starring Willem Dafoe and it's about Defoe breaking into this fancy apartment that goes in lockdown and he gets trapped in there, which causes him to go through a psychological phase. <laughs> yep, give me that movie. I love it when Willem Defoe shows his dark side in movies. I've loved that ever since I first saw him as the Green Goblin in the first Spider-Man film, so please give me more of that in this film. 65 a movie directed by the writers of A Quiet Place and starring Adam Driver, and it's about Driver as a pilot from the future who accidentally goes back in time 65 million years into the prehistoric times, and he finds a little girl there, and both of them try to survive a world of dinosaurs around them. It sounds interesting, I love the two Quiet Place films, and I do like Adam Driver as an actor, so hopefully this will be a pretty fun and suspenseful film, and hopefully this is better than Jurassic World Dominion. Moving on to April with a movie that I am very skeptical about because of one certain casting choice, which we'll get into more of that in a minute, the Super Mario Brothers movie. I grew up playing some of the Mario games as a kid. I played the Nintendo 64 game and of course played the original game and used to watch my cousin play Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube when I was little. And I used to watch this episode of X-Play on G4 where they review some of the more popular Super Mario games including Super Mario Galaxies which was the new Mario game at that time which by the way, does anyone remember X-Play from G4? If you have, then I give you kudos for that. The animation looks stunning, it looks like it could be a fun animated film, and most of the cast does get me on board, except for one, and that is Chris Pratt as Mario, which, no disrespect to Chris Pratt, I do like him as an actor, I like him as Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy films, and Andy Dwyer from Parks and Recreation. But as Mario, it just doesn't make any sense to me, I just don't buy it. Even from watching the two trailers they released, I still don't see him as Mario. I, I just don't feel that in him. But I'm hoping that this film is a lot of fun and maybe Chris Pratt could prove me wrong and end up being really good as the character. Rainfeld, a movie about Dracula's assistant wanting to leave Dracula's shadow starring Nicholas Holt, Aquafina, and Nicholas Cage as Dracula. <laughs> yes, just shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money because that sounds amazing. Evil Dead Rise. I think the Evil Dead trilogy is very entertaining, especially around the Halloween time. I always have a lot of fun watching them. And now we're getting a new one after the 2013 remake. And we had an Evil Dead series as well. And this one's going to be different. It's going to take place in a Los Angeles apartment about a mom getting possessed by a demon and I'm hoping it's really good it's got a new director a new cast and you still have Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell involved as producers so I am hoping that this film would be a lot of fun all right May Guardians of the Galaxy volume 3 I love the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. I think that one's very funny and very entertaining. And the second one wasn't that bad. It was actually a decent follow-up. I mean, not as good as the first film, but I still enjoy it for what it is. And the holiday special is just very endearing and entertaining to watch. And they did confirm this to be the final chapter for the Guardians of the Galaxy. So hopefully this will have both of James Gunn's usual humor that we love seeing and hopefully some really good sad moments because the trailers may look like it was going to be a very serious film, so hopefully this will be a very satisfying conclusion for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Moving on to June with a movie I am super excited for besides Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I loved Into the Spider-Verse. I thought it was a really fun watch and a new refreshing take on the Spider-Man story and of course with incredible animation. 
And I'm hoping that this is as good, if not better, than Into the Spider-Verse with really good animation, good character development, a great story, and a good emotional core like the first film had. Elemental, Pixar's newest film about two elements falling in love. One is fire and the other is water. I am looking forward to this because I love most of Pixar's films. I do enjoy a few of them, like most of them are pretty fun, but the ones I enjoy the most are the more mature ones with depth and layers. And that's what I love about Pixar, making films that are not only for kids, but for adults as well, and I'm hoping that this film ends up becoming one of their best films in recent years. Asteroid City, Wes Anderson's newest film. Wes Anderson is one of the best directors of all time, like Moonrise Kingdom, Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Those are very good films. And this movie stars Tom Hanks, Edward Norton, Scarlett Johansson, Margot Robbie, Steve Carell, Brian Cranston, the list goes on. And it's about a stargazing convention that gets disrupted by a world-changing event. So hopefully this film ends up becoming one of Wes Anderson's best films. Now for a movie I am both excited for, but also skeptical about, and I'm hoping that this film is still great. And that film is... Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I absolutely adore the original Indiana Jones trilogy. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, it had its moments, but it's easily the weakest in the Indiana Jones franchise. But I'm still excited for this film regardless, and it's not going to be directed by Steven Spielberg, unfortunately. This time, it's going to be directed by James Mangold, and he's been on a roll with his films like Walk the Line, 310 to Yuma, Identity, Logan, Ford v Ferrari, so this does give me faith in this film being great. So let's hope this film is great and becomes a satisfying conclusion for Indiana Jones. Jones. Fingers crossed. Insidious Fear the Dark, or Insidious 5 if you want to call it that. I'm looking forward to this because I love the first Insidious film. I thought it was one of the most terrifying horror films I've ever seen with creepy imagery and jump scares that really worked for me with one really good jump scare. And if you've seen the first Insidious film, then you know which jump scare I am talking about. And the second film was Pretty good, not great, but I still enjoy it for what it is, and 3 and 4, not so much. They're pretty forgettable for me. But 3 and 4 were prequels. This one takes place 10 years after the second film with the Lambert family once again being terrified by ghosts and demons. And this time around, it's going to be directed by Patrick Wilson, who plays the father character in both the first two films and in this film. But just like Michael B. Jordan, this one does get me concerned because this is his first time directing a film, so this is a huge and crazy thing for him to all of a sudden direct an Insidious film and have it be your first film ever. But I am hoping that this film does prove me wrong with Patrick Wilson directing and maybe it would also open the door for him to direct more films in the future. Or not, if it doesn't do well. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I am a fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. I enjoy 1 and 3, not so much the second film, and I love 4, 5, and 6. I think those are some of the best action films of all time. You have Tom Cruise coming back doing his insane crazy stunts once again, and the characters coming back from the previous films, and they did confirm this in Part 2, which is coming out next year, to be the final two films in the Mission Impossible franchise, so hopefully these two films will also give a very satisfying conclusion to the franchise, and I'm hoping that they do, especially this film, end up being as good as 4, 5, and 6. Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan's next film. I love most of Christopher Nolan's films. I think they are fantastic, and he hasn't made a bad movie yet. And it's about J. Robert Oppenheimer, played by Killian Murphy, working with a team on the Manhattan Project, but then it leads to them making the atom bomb. His last few films, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Tenant, I did enjoy, but I don't love them as much as his other films because... Those films either have pacing issues or lack character development, but besides those issues, I can still enjoy them for what they are. And I'm hoping that this is great, and I'm hoping that 
I wouldn't say a return to form, but hoping that this could be one of his best films in recent years because Christopher Nolan for me is one of my favorite directors of all time. Now here's a film I'm not excited for at all for certain reasons I'll get into in a second, Barbie. Yeah, I'm not excited for this at all because I was never a Barbie fan growing up and I'm not excited for this one, but it's directed by Greta Gerwig who did Lady Bird and Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, Will Ferrell, and Simu Liu are talented actors, so maybe it has potential to be good, I guess. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Moving on to August with the animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I remember watching some of the shows as a kid. I loved the first live action film from the 90s. And of course, I had some of the toys growing up as well. And I'm looking forward to this because not only is Seth Rogen involved, which if you know who that is, then you've probably already seen movies like Pineapple Express and This Is The End. So that should be interesting for this movie. And it's also from the creators of The Mitchells versus the machines and I thought that movie was awesome so maybe this film has potential to be the first great Ninja Turtles film in recent years. Blue Beetle, a character that I've seen mostly in some of the animated stuff and I've been curious to see how they would do him in live action. In case you don't know who Blue Beetle is, he is a Hispanic kid named Jamie Reyes who finds a little bug from outer space called a scarab that latches onto his back and gives him a suit and gives him weapons and helps him fly. And hopefully this one does come out this year, but it is possible that it could either get cancelled or pushed back to next year, so let's hope not. Let's actually hope it does come out this year, and let's also hope that this one is at least good. September. Next goal wins, and it is about Thomas Rungan, played by Michael Fassbender, who is trying to turn the American Samoa soccer team into winners. And it's directed by Taika Waititi, and I love Taika Waititi as a director. I love his earlier films like What We Do in the Shadows, Hunt for the Wilder People, I love Jojo Rabbit, and of course, Thor Ragnarok. Thor Love and Thunder, even though I still thought it was okay when I first watched it, but when I think about it now, I'm like, okay, that's too much, I don't think I can watch this movie again, and I'm hoping that this film ends up becoming Watiti's return to form. Now for one film in October, True Love, directed by Gareth Edwards, and stars John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Allison Janney, Danny McBride, Ken Watanabe, and the list goes on, and the plot hasn't fully been revealed yet. It's mostly just a sci-fi, true love romance movie, at least that's what I think it is just by looking at the title, but I'm still looking forward to this because because I do think Gareth Edwards is a talented director. I like his first film, Monster. His second film, Godzilla, still has parts I enjoy, and it's the 2014 Godzilla. You know, the one that barely has Godzilla in it. And I wasn't a huge fan of Rogue One, so I'm hoping that this film would be a big comeback for him, because I do think he has potential to be a really good director. Now for November with Dune Part 2. I do enjoy the first Dune from 2021 quite a bit. It has good acting, really good visuals, and an awesome score by Hans Zimmer, and Denis Villeneuve did an excellent job directing it. And now he's back for this one, and the original cast is coming back as well with new characters like Leah Sadu, Florence Pugh, and Christopher Walken as the main villain, so I am hoping that this does end up being as good, if not better, than the first Dune film. Wish is a new animated Disney film about a girl who makes a plea to a wishing star to save her town. And I'm looking forward to this one because not only will have the traditional CG animation which we're all used to seeing, but there have been rumors that it could be mixed with hand-drawn animation as well. Now, again, it's not confirmed, it's not official, it's just a rumor, but I am actually hoping that's true because I do love the original hand-drawn animation from Disney's original film, so hopefully this film will have some of that. 
Now we're ending with December with movies like Wonka, directed by Paul King of Paddington 1 and 2 fame, and stars Timothy Chalamet as a young Willy Wonka. I'm actually curious of seeing this because I do love the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder. I think that film is still really fun to watch. And the Johnny Depp film I used to love as a kid, but as I got older, I begun to realize it's not that great. And I actually think Paul King is a talented director. I do enjoy his two Paddington films. Don't judge me. And I do like Timothy Chalamet as an actor, so hopefully this does end up being a really fun origin story for Willy Wonka, even though we technically already had an origin story with a Johnny Depp film, but... Let's hope this film does a better job at the origin story than that film did. Now to add in a couple of films that don't have a release date yet, but are still confirmed to come out this year. One is called The Killer, directed by David Fincher, and starring Michael Fassbender as an assassin who starts to grow a conscience about wanting to be an assassin and kill people or not. And that sounds like it could be a really good drama. I do think Michael Fassbender is a talented actor, and I love David Fincher as a director. Whether it's movies like Seven, Zodiac, Fight Club, which is my favorite of his, The Social Network, and Gone Girl, I think he is an excellent director when he's making dark and psychological films that are very disturbing and something for people to, to talk about. Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Martin Scorsese and stars Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, that's all I gotta say to get you excited for this film. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. It is about a wealthy oil assage nation getting murdered under mysterious circumstances in the 1920s. And those are my films I am looking forward to and skeptical about and dreading to see in 2023. Some of these movies could end up being really good, some of these could end up being really bad, and some of them could be in the middle. And if some of them end up either disappointing me or just not being good at all, then, well, that's life. So guys, which movies are you excited for and which movies are you dreading to see? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.